Oh my gosh, they're doing well, that's so the color well. They should. That's the colour they should be. This is called uh, the round-leaved brium. So this moss has only been found in one place in the whole of the UK in the last 30 years. There's a little reservoir near Edinburgh. They've definitely bulked up, definitely. When we found it two years ago, we took a small sample and the Royal Botanic Gardens Edinburgh has bulked it up from those couple of stems to a population that we can plant out into new sites. This has never been cultivated before. We tried different growing medias, different methods to get more so we could bulk it up. And once we found to make it happy, we made it very, very happy. And now we have about thousands of stems growing in the nursery at the Botanic Gardens. And now when we come back, hopefully, these patches will be a lot bigger. <laughs> a lot of what we're doing now hasn't been done before. This moss loves mud. So we thought Scottish water reservoirs with their fluctuating water levels have suitable habitat for this species. This is a compensation reservoir. So the water doesn't go directly to the public for drinking. It offsets the abstractions we take from Carron Valley Reservoir and it regulates the levels in the river to make sure we're not causing harm. We also have a hydro turbine here, so we're generating electricity as well. So both of those reasons will cause the water level to drop and to vary through the year. And that's exactly what this little brown's looking for. So we did a first planting in mid-July and planted out little clumps about the size of a five pence coin and we've just been checking on them and they have had growth both outwards producing new stems and gained a little bit of height so we're very proud of them. <laughs> Yeah, there, look at all that. Oh, yeah. This species doesn't move itself very well. It doesn't have spores in the same way that most mosses would. It just reproduces asexually by producing little stems. They, they have like spread out naturally as well. Across the whole of Europe, we've been losing a lot of sites like this to things like water pollution and stabilization of water bodies. And we are losing sites faster than this moss can get to new sites. So we're giving it help in hand. There are 39 critically endangered moss in this country. This is one of the species that it has a simple solution. Bring it to new sites and it's been a really cost-effective solution as well. The sites were chosen because they are managed this way anyway. We're not changing anything about the environment. We're just bringing the moss to the place, not changing the place to suit the moss. It's wonderful to plant these out, but the key importance of any translocation is actually the monitoring. So we can come back and we can learn and make sure that we're doing it the right way. We have still got plenty of material in the gardens. So this really is an experimental endeavor and so far so good. The original size we yeah. did was like planted. Yeah, <laughs> we shouldn't pretend that we fully understand ecosystems. They're extremely complex things of many thousands of species interacting together. We should just always take a principle that we preserve what is there. Wonderful to see. Isn't it? Yeah. yeah. And you can see there, this whole young growth coming in round there. The moss would take millions of years to evolve. It might take a few decades to make extinct. So I think there's just real value in maintaining all of that. We hold two thirds of Europe's biodiversity in the bryophyte population due to our very wet, rainy climate, our relatively low levels of pollution. So it's part of Scotland's global responsibility to look after some of these species to preserving that biodiversity. We have a um, a goal that we're trying to increase the biodiversity of our land holdings. We've been doing projects like peatland restoration, reforestation, and this forms part of our objective to look after the nation's ecology. Scotland has such an important significance for our bryophytes, and if we want to build ecosystems and if we want to do restoration, we need to look at the whole picture. We can't just do landscape. We need to look at the small things that knit it all together. And I often describe bryophytes as the mortar of our brickwork of our nature.